Hello and welcome to Kidderminster Town Hall and more importantly the 1855 Hill organ that is behind me here. I'm Tim Morris, I've had the privilege of being the organist here in the Town Hall for some 40 years and I cannot tell you that many people walk past the front of this hall and they have no idea of the treasure that's sitting inside the hall. Organ enthusiasts from all over the world come to see this instrument and many ask the question why. Well they ask two questions why. The first is why did we come to have a, an organ like this in this hall? And I think you answer that question by saying if you go in the mid 19th century the great uh, mill towns of the north, Bradford, Halifax, Leeds, were all having great big town halls built, um, statements of wealth and general uh, bonevity in, in, the, in the towns and the cities up there. And Kidderminster was making its mark as a centre of excellence for carpets. And when this hall was built, the organ was installed by public donation. And it was built by William Hill, nothing to do with the um, licensed betting uh, office. It was in fact the equivalent of the Rolls Royce of organ building in the mid 19th century. William Hill was asked to build this instrument and we are so delighted to have it here. There are many apocryphal stories about its, its life uh, over the last years, um, but it's been retained for its original specification and its original construction, which makes it unique. And that's the second reason when I was asking why a few minutes ago. We have been so lucky that despite various things going in the hall, um, bringing in new heating systems and heating systems demanding that temperatures are certainly high levels but which are not acceptable to an instrument which is basically made out of timber and, and a very fine timber at that which tends to dry out and cause problems. But we've been so lucky that over the years the various councils that have been responsible for it have maintained it and still do look after it to this present day. One thing that's interesting about it is that it's so versatile. It hasn't got a large number of stops, but what it's got, you can use a number of variations and combinations that make it so, so versatile and so interesting. Um, you heard, just as I say, the Toccata and Fugue in D minor by Bach, which is the basically the standard organ tone with some reeds, some trumpets and things thrown in occasionally to spice it up. Um, this particular instrument, and we'll look at it in a few minutes, is made up of different divisions. And behind me you can probably see three, three sets of keyboards. The middle one is the great organ, which is the standard organ tone. The one on the top is called the swell organ. And all the pipes from that division are in a box that you can open and, can, and close, like a Venetian blind on the front of it, to control the volume of that. And underneath the lower manual is called the choir organ. Nothing ironically to do with uh, choirs and singing. It derives its name from the chair organ because in some of our European uh, organs, the organ is actually, actually placed behind the organist's chair and plays down into the place of worship below. And they have all got similar stops, but some have got um, more what we call mutation stops and slightly different stops. We'll talk about those later. What I'd like to do now is play for you a piece um, that demonstrates the contrast between the choir and the louder stops. It's the Elegy by George Thorburn Ball, who was in fact the organist of Birmingham Town Hall. And when I was a mere youngster in the 1970s, I used to race out in my lunch hour to go and hear him play at his recital and try and get back before my boss arrived uh, to make, make sure I was sitting at my desk. So here is George Thorburn Ball's Elegy.
Yeah. So as you see, that shows a complete contrast to the stars of stops and their volume and their different tonal qualities. What I'd like to do now is to play for you a piece just using the manuals. No pedals, uh, none of the deeper notes, and it's by Ernest Tomlinson, who was not so much a classical uh, pipe organist as they we seem to be known these days, um, but spent a lot of his time in London. And this is just um, an ante, andante semplice, a simple andante. And the flutes on this instrument are second to none. They are the originals, they were built by William Hill, and different organists liken them to different things in life. It's been described as just like Cornish cream. Other people, more perhaps dear to my heart, call it like a pint of Banks's bitter. Here is Ernest Tomlinson's Andante and Dante Semplice. <laughs>
One of the things I do enjoy in the town hall here is being involved with the Hill Organ Promotion Society. When we um, had the organ rebuilt in 1980, trying to keep it as close as it was to its original specification, we had a grant from the Carnegie Trust, Andrew Carnegie, the well-known well Scottish philanthropist. And we were under an obligation with the council to keep the instrument, A, in good order, and make sure it was well promoted. And that we've, what we've done over the years. And it's now that duty is maintained by the Hill Organ Promotion Society. And uh, they have actually been involved with today and have allowed me out to come and play. And I'm going to play uh, a piece of music by Edward Elgar, our local man, local boy made good. Um, it's the Imperial March. It was um, arranged by George Martin. Um, and in my recitals that I give for Hill Organ Promotion Society, in every recital I try to include a piece of Elgar. Dr. Roy Massey, who was the Carriford Cathedral always used to say, an organ recital isn't an organ recital unless it includes Bach. I've just said an organ recital isn't, isn't an organ recital until it includes Elgar. So, Elgar's Imperial March.
I think the one thing about that Imperial March is the nobility of the Elgar's music, so fitted to this hall, and you can imagine it, a mayor-making ceremony, the hall absolutely filled with people, the councillors, the mayorality, our distinguished guests who come to us in all their civic regalia, and the organ playing that fine melody or melodies like that. And that shows what a versatile instrument this is because it can be used for so many things. And even in my tenure of 40 years, I've even played it for um, a kid of Mr. Harry is winning a certain um, recognition in, in, in their particular field. And we had an honorary dinner and I had to play, um, what was one I think for it? Some match of the day theme. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll just cut straight into that and I had, had to play the match of the day theme. We're coming to the end of this particular uh, programme and what I'd like to do is um, finish um, with a piece by a French composer. Louis James Alfred Lefebvre Veilly is not only a name to conjure with but so is his music. If you are a keen fan of his, you will be told, or you will tell us, that it's wonderful music, very romantic. If you're not so much a fan of his, his music, um, you will be told that it's very banal and um, not to be played. Um, I'll leave it to you to judge. This sortie, it's, it's a going out piece, a sortie. Um, he's French. And the reason I include some French music at this particular juncture is that in our opening recital after the rebuild in 1980, we were honoured by Francis Jackson, organist of York Minster, to give that opening recital. And he stood on this stage and said, this is the absolute perfect English Victorian organ, but it plays French organ music particularly well. And I think you'll agree. <laughs>